Kicker Weekly is a three-episode in anime discussion podcast where two brothers discuss a show of their choice. The show can be anything from a current season flop to a decades-old classic. What are they going to talk about next? Who knows? They sure don't. All right, what have we got this this week? Some pretty exciting news this week. Not only is it E3, but we got a couple of other things as well. Um, we have uh, Netflix. They have already announced season three for Castlevania. Season two hasn't even come out I yet. I know. Season two hasn't come out yet, but they're so excited about season two, they've already announced season three. Oh, that's fantastic. Season one was incredible. Oh, yeah, it was. That's me playing with... Uh... <laughs> accidentally hitting the uh the springs the on spring the on microphone the, stand the, on the boom stand yep um yeah um but there i i loved absolutely loved season one it was um, fantastic all, it, it was just four episodes but it was just amazing oh yeah yeah um and so i'm very excited for season two i'm currently not paying for um for netflix but i am planning on uh picking up netflix to watch it when it comes out i'm kind of uh, one of those people yeah. who only picks up netflix every every now and then to get something right. when it first comes out and um, you know maybe once we uh maybe once while we have netflix maybe some of our three episodes in will be next netflix exclusive anime yeah maybe so maybe we'll, uh, we'll time it along that <laughs> um so yeah uh, season three has been announced. Uh, that's very, very exciting. Um, and uh, let's uh, go ahead and go into the next bit of news, which All is right. something you just, you came across. Yeah. Well, I, while I was uh, while I was browsing uh, Twitter and uh, um, uh, I was releasing information that uh, tr- you know promoting our podcast uh, through various channels, I stumbled across a video where the maker where the guys behind Homestar Runner are planning on kickstarting a uh, tabletop version of Trogdor. And the video is absolutely hilarious. Uh, it's it um, The game is played like... Um, it, 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 there isn't really a board, but the game seems to be played on a, uh, a table of uh, cards that uh, are, are tiles that you flip. That's, mm-hmm. So it kind of kind of looks like a memory game at, at first, but the tiles are either regular land or burninated land. Mm-hmm. Well, it's regular, and then when Trogdor, Trogdor gets to it, it's burninated or so, something yes. along those lines. I'm if I have the money for it, um, I plan on backing this because this looks amazing. It's, well, they're launching it in July, and yep. uh, when it comes about, we'll bring it up again and link you guys to their uh, to their. Um, Kickstarter page, so that mm-hmm. uh, you can also donate. This looks absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Okay, uh, next up, um, it's E3. It is okay, E3. Okay, it's E3, and I've been streaming most of the um, most of the press conferences and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And some of the most exciting news for me is the new Smash Brothers. I've been playing Smash Brothers since the day I keep. I. I'm sitting too close to the mic now. I'd like being able to lean back, but I can't do it now because of our little thing we're doing for our patrons. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we record video for our patrons. So uh, if you want to actually see our ugly mugs record this, um, come visit us on our Patreon page. <laughs> Anyways, um, some of the biggest news for me um, is uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and there have been a lot of memes about this coming out lately. <laughs> Smash Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. One of the reasons they're calling it Ultimate is because. If this character has been in Smash in the past, they are in this one. They have over 60 playable characters, and they've already announced three new ones. Ooh. One of them is the Inklings, the kids from um, uh, oh, Splatoon. 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 Mm-hmm. The Makes kids sense. from Splatoon. Makes sense. Um, they have announced Daisy, who is the, who is a clone character of Peach, but yes. now Daisy's her own character rather than just a recolor of Peach. Okay. Um, and by recolor, I mean she's Peach with Daisy's colors. Oh, yeah. You, um, you had uh, playable skins. You just picked which skin Daisy was, uh, which, what well, Peach was. Well, right? just, uh, for certain characters. Like um the for um for Daisy or oh, not Daisy for Peach, uh, it was just different colors with Peach every single time. Okay. Uh, whereas with um with say Robin mm-hmm. uh, from Fire Emblem, there was a male or a female 
Robin, so you could pick male or female Robin, four different colors of each. Okay. Uh, whereas Cloud, you could pick different variations of his costume from the from Final Fantasy VII, or mm-hmm. um, you could pick the um, his costume from um, the movie, whatever the movie was called, Final Fantasy VII, the, mo- the, the movie they made. All right. Um, so certain people had different costumes. Advent for- Children. Advent Children. That's Advent what it was. Children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, the the villager from Animal Crossing. Um, there are eight different villagers just because you kind of make your own character in Animal Crossing. So uh-huh. each one is completely different. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, but y- those are just like different reskins and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. As opposed to um, say Lucina from Fire Emblem. She was very much a clone of Marth. Right. Um, and even in this one, they're, they're, they've just thought I admitted, yeah, she's a clone of Marth. And so they've, uh, They've added a little E, the the symbol for Echo, mm-hmm. next to her. So uh, you know that she is an Echo character, is what they're ah. calling them. Uh, and so Daisy is an Echo character of Peach. Mm-hmm. And um, Dark Pit is an Echo character of Pit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, when, when you're talking about reskins, my mind keeps going back to the, uh, to the um, Mario Kart games where, you know, each one of uh, Bowser's kids from uh, Super Mario World uh, was one playable character. They just oh, no, no, switched no. out their skins. Um, that actually, yeah, no, uh, they did that in Mario Kart, but they also did that for uh, Koopa, uh, for uh, Bowser Junior. Bowser Junior in Smash Brothers. Okay, and they brought back the Koopalings again, where it's just it's a reskin. Okay, mm-hmm. same character, same character, same move. You just, you just pick the different. You just pick a different skin. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um. But anyways, on with the rest of the E3 news. Some of the biggest news for me is um, the new game from From Software. Uh-huh. Uh, or by From Software. Um, they're the guys who made uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Um, Bloodborne. Uh-huh. Uh, those super hardcore games. Um, well, the same team is making another game like that. They haven't released too many details on it. Mm-hmm. But it's called uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Shadows Die. And there is a trailer for it. We're not going to watch the trailer here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> even though, you know, uh, we, are, we are still primarily uh, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And it's set in the fantastical version of Feudal Japan. Okay. Um, where the main character, um, he is, I forget exactly what he's called. It's something to do with Wolf. Um, but he loses an arm at the very beginning of the game. And then mm-hmm. somebody replaces that arm. Now imagine uh, that arm is used as a multi-tool. Um, I don't know if it's just going to be you, you switch out the item and use different items. Mm-hmm. Because in uh, Dark Souls you have two arms. so And one button's one arm, one button's the other arm. Mm-hmm. It's probably the same thing. But you know you can switch out what you have equipped in each arm. So I wonder if the other arm is just going to be his tool arm. Where like he at one point he's using a grappling hook to go ahead and move across levels. And go up levels and you know, uh, attack enemies really, really quickly. Right. Um, another time an ax pops out and he uses that ax to destroy an enemy's shield and then follow up with his katana. Nice. Another time he pulls out a metal fan that covers his entire upper half of his body okay. and he blocks a large katana coming down and attacking him. Um, oh. it looks awesome. Um, I just barely beat Dark Souls uh, Remastered uh, uh-huh. the other day. Uh, and while I enjoy the Dark Souls games, Bloodborne is easily my favorite out of all the Soulsborne games. Yeah. So seeing a new game, it's not Bloodborne, but a new game that kind of stills the style of the Soulsborne games, but um, not Dark Souls, mm-hmm. I'm very excited about. Um, but... Um, we saw a bunch of stuff for Kingdom Hearts 3, which is very exciting. That has a release date for uh, January 29th of next year, 2019. Okay. Um, we uh, Another really, really exciting game for me is Ghosts of Tsushima. Uh, you've played the, um, or at least the third one, you've played the um, Infamous games, right? I've played Infamous Second Son. Yeah, that's the third game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the first two for the PS3, and then that one was for PS4. Uh-huh. Um, Ghost of Tsushima is a historical action game mm-hmm. set in feudal Japan during the Mongol invasion. Okay. And you play a lone samurai fighting them off. And it was kind of interesting seeing people talk about the two games, because um, mm. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and another game, I forget what it's called, but um, they're very, very fantastical mm-hmm. takes on feudal Japan. Whereas this one is very, very cut and dry, very realistic, but also at the same time artistic. Um, if you've ever seen any of the older 
samurai movies where they've got just these beautiful framing shots uh there's there was just so many amazing shots where he's in a, at one scene the main character is in a duel with somebody who was a friend of his uh -huh. and the camera just pans back and you see like these trees and things um and leaves just trying to framing the shot and uh, uh um but the combat is very very realistic how they would have fought back then um and uh it being made by Sucker Punch, which, you know, I absolutely have adored every one of the games I've played so far. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for this one to come out. Nice. Um, yeah. So many games. Some of my, two of my favorite ones were not even mentioned here. Mm -hmm. The new Doom game <laughs> has been announced. <laughs> uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, the demons have invaded Earth. And it's just this long... The, Finally. I know. Well, um, Doom 2, Hell on Earth, you oh, know. Uh, yeah, so okay. that's what happens in Doom 2, I believe. Um, I actually never played the original Doom 2. I, yeah. I bought it, but it was never, I never able to got it to work. Um, one of the uh, fall drawbacks of, you know, playing games on PC in the early 90s. Yep. Or the mid-90s. Um, but... Doom Eternal is just this great, has just this great trailer of all these demons... Um, you don't even. I could tell it was a Doom game after the first ten seconds or so because mm -hmm. the demons were very, very similar and realistic. Uh, the very same design as the demons from Doom twenty sixteen. Uh -huh. Um, um, but um, and it's playing kind of this low, low rumbling music, and then this demon skull gets knocked off of a block or whatever, and it hits the ground, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you hear the doo doo. Doom, doom, the the Doom riff, and Doom guy, his foot comes down, and as soon as the, I saw the skull, I'm like, oh, the Doom guy's gonna step on it, and I was like, yes, Doom guy stepped on it, and then it cuts back, it, the camera pans up, and you just see a horde of demons walking towards Doom guy, and you only see his back, and you see that uh, this time he's got his arms bare, like uh, his biceps are bare this time, rather than just being in full the full suit. Yeah, he loads the double barrel shotgun, <laughs> cocks it. And runs towards the demons, and then just boom, cut out, and then slow camera pan back to reveal the title Doom Eternal. Fun. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, okay. And then um, the other one that I'm crazy excited for um, is uh, I know it's years off. Um, but I'm just one of those people who just went crazy ballistic happy when Bethesda showed the teaser for Elder Scrolls 6. Okay, then. <laughs> I just went ballistic happy for that. So, yeah. Um, some people were complaining about n there not being enough new games and stuff like that for, mm -hmm. um, for, uh, oh, shoot, I'm closing my, uh, my, uh, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. A lot of people were upset about there not being a lot of uh, new game announcements. Right. But um, Sony and both Sony and Nintendo went in saying that, look, we're not going to be showing you new games. I mean, even Nintendo back in the day, back like a month ago or so, said our E3 presentation is going to be focusing on Smash Brothers. Th they just flat out said that. Yeah. And while they did show some new games that they're working on, uh, that they're planning on coming out with this year, like the new mm -hmm. Super Mario Party, yeah. um, which looks like it has some cool features. Um, now, one of the problems, one of the mm -hmm. problems inherent in E3, mm -hmm. is that you have uh, once you get a development team getting ready for both the launch of an actual game mm -hmm. and the E3 demonstration of that game, you eventually start splitting your resources, mm -hmm. and then you end up making two different mm -hmm. games. And so, what's released and what was promised are so divergent, mm -hmm. and then you spend well, so much money just on the process. Yeah, well... And, and that's just that's just something that happens. And so mm -hmm. seeing fewer games at E3 mm -hmm. can mean mm -hmm. more quality in what's mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah. Oh, well, that's another game I was excited for. Uh, Rage 2. I'm not typically... I didn't much care for the first Rage game, but this one's being developed by Avalanche, the same guys who made the Just Cause games. Yeah. And if you've seen the trailer for it, it has Andrew WK singing Let's Party. Um, Andrew WK is the creator of Party Metal. Okay. And his music is amazing. And he was actually there for the Bethesda conference performing live. Uh -huh. And I thought it was awesome, but they kind of showed members of the audience and they were just like, just kind of deadpan, just not really getting into it. I was like, guys, it's Andrew WK. Just enjoy the music. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But Rage 2, uh, it's being made by the same guys who do the Just Cause games, and that alone piques my interest in it. They okay. also announced Just Cause 4. Uh -huh. But one thing Nintendo has done in the last several E3s, um, they only really talk about games that are coming out in the next six months to a year. Right. You know? Um, Nintendo's always been very closed-lipped about... Um, about their games and when things are coming out. They mm -hmm. always play it very close to the chest. And that upsets a lot of people, but I've always felt that Nintendo takes the time that they need to make the game right, mm -hmm. and they'll show it to us when it's when they're ready. When it's ready. Right. So that didn't bother me at all. Right. But anyways, that's it for the news. We, we talked about the news for a bit this time. I guess it's just I got excited about E3. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, Don't worry about it. Uh, we had a lot of E3. A lot of stuff's coming up this week. Um mm -hmm. uh, and most of it's E3. Uh, even uh, even Crunchyroll and uh, Anime News Network is chock full of E3 chock announcements. Chock full of E3 announcements. Yep. So. Yep. Can't mm -hmm. escape it. Yep. Oh, and kind of in anime news, this is going back to E3, but they announced, and this is I'm very excited about this because I actually sold my 360 before I got a chance to play this game. Uh -huh. Tales of Vesperia, Vesperia Definitive Edition is coming out. Really? Uh, for the PS4, for the Xbox One, and for the Nintendo Switch. Uh-huh. Um, you've never played a Tales of game, have you? Um, no, I don't think I have. Okay. They are some of the best JRPGs ever. Okay. One thing that they do, when the, and as a writer, I love how they do this. They actually... Okay, when you're making a game, what's the basic development process? You kind of make the game... Well, you work, so, you work out your mechanics, and mm -hmm. you try to develop a narrative around the mechanics that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You see, they don't do that. One thing that kind of drives me crazy about Square these days mm -hmm. uh, is that I almost, it, it's very, very hard for me to get into these character driven stories uh -huh. because the characters always feel like an afterthought. Right. Uh, ever since ever since Sakaguchi left after Final Fantasy X, the characters have always felt like an afterthought to me. They, they've just kind of wanted to drive the game and the graphics and the gameplay and things like that. Whereas most characters the characters have felt very shallow to me. Mm -hmm. And that really came out in Final Fantasy XIII. Uh -huh. um, 15, I felt differently. I felt like they really focused on the characters in that one. And 15 had shortcomings, but I still enjoyed it a lot more than 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the reasons I love the Tales of games is because they actually sit down and figure out who each character is before writing a single line of code. They write, they come up with the characters, they come up with the story before writing a single line of code for the game hmm. once they have the characters down they then make the game okay so the game the stories well, you, are when, always when you very know build, deep when you know you're building a jrpg there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of variant well, between the, 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 the core mechanics of it they've always so the the tales of games that always feel it's the same basic combat system mm -hmm. but they always make tweaks and improvements to it throughout so sure sure no mm -hmm. you but you know, you start from a you, once you have a root system mm -hmm. working, then yeah, code wise, that's mm -hmm. that's when you can start uh, embellishing. Okay, well, um, anyways, I recommend those games. Um, so please, uh, let's stop with the news <laughs> and let's go ahead and get into uh, three episodes in. Right, and this week it was my choice, and this week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so this week I uh, picked. You put me in front of a camera. I'm gonna I'm gonna ham it up for the people who are watching. Anyways, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week we picked uh, how to keep a mummy. How to keep a mummy. You want to read the synopsis that we got? All right. So according to the Crunchyroll synopsis, it reads. Kashiwagi Sora is living a normal high school student life when his adventurer father sends him a mummy from his travels in Egypt. Sora balks at the letter from his crazy dad. Quote, I found a cool mummy, so I decided to give it to you, son. At first, but the mummy that emerges from inside the coffin is a mere 12 centimeters tall, small enough to fit in the palm of his hand. Not only that, it's shy, a crybaby, and most of all, Heckin' cute. It actually says Heckin' without the G and has the apostrophe on it. It's Heckin'. That's, that, that is the word they use in the description. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To finish up. And so Sora and ends up keeping the mummy, naming his little his new little buddy Mikun, 
But living with a mummy might be easier said than done. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So, this show... This show is diabetes-inducing sweetness. I texted Mary. Um, The reason I know about this show is because our friend Mary, Uh uh, she actually discovered the manga and read the manga and said that she... It was adorable, and she couldn't get enough of it. Uh-huh. And um, I texted Mary as I was watching it. And let me go ahead and find the exact thing that I sent to her here. I said... Oh, come on. No, I texted her too, but she didn't reply. She didn't? No. Mm, I'll, I'll have to get on her case about that. Now, when I watched it, I watched it with Jasmine. Oh, dear. Real which fast, was the I... best experience for me, because <laughs> her reactions were priceless and i can't wait to tell you about them so tell me what mary said i said i texted her this mummy is so adorable it's giving me gum disease (laughs) Mm -hmm. did she reply she did she's uh just a bunch of hearts (laughs) Mm -hmm. she replied anyways um well okay so let's go ahead and get get into it i mean the show is the show is great it starts off as sora um getting ready for school um and as he does or getting ready for the day yeah um as he's uh he's cleaning mm-hmm. i don't i don't think the first day is a, a school day no yeah he's he's spending his time cleaning the house mm-hmm. and getting things together and they kind of reveal that there is a it seems to be a shut-in living in the dark. Um, mm-hmm. I, at first, I thought it was his sister, but it turns out it's his it's aunt. It's his aunt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't and know that she, until I read the description, but because of the way they were she's familiar got, with each other. We'll get into her later, but it seems like she's got multiple jobs that keep her super busy. Right. Um, but, um, and one of them, um, like, there was a... there was a He was doing something. We'll get something, into that later. Was... Let's... I, I literally just said, let's get into that later. Her jobs and stuff. No, no, the... I was just saying that there was a knock on the door, and he called out to her to go answer it. Oh, okay. And she didn't reply. Okay. And so he's finding out that she's got a deadline. Okay, she, And so okay. he's he's going to go get to the door. Yeah. And that's that's what introduces us to the next element. Yep, okay. He's, he's the, the delivery person sends him this giant package. It's huge. It's twice his size. Um, and so he opens it up, and it is a coffin. Not a sarcophagus. No, it's, it's not an Egyptian sarcophagus. It's a Christian style. It, it's a coffin, coffin with a golden cross on it. Yes, and it's big, and uh, he gets this letter from his dad that's the size of a Brandon Sanderson novel. Yes, uh, top it's, sta- it's top liter- staple. So he, yeah, he's flipping like, up. The, he's yeah, flipping over it, the like tied together with a with a, a, a strap through all the pages and stuff. And so he's flipping through it like this, and it's it's so literally it's a manual. Yeah, it's a manual. You know, it's huge. Like, you know, like a Brandon Sanderson-sized novel or a Robert Jordan-sized novel. You know, just one of those yeah. huge, thick things. Yeah. Um, But he, uh, yeah, and so he's flipping through it and his dad's giving him instructions about this mummy who is super cute and he knew that he would love it, so he sent it here. Yes. And then... <laughs> and so he's like, he, my dad sent me a mummy. And so he pulls out... What what what, what weapon did he pull out? He's, he's holding something ridiculous. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the weapon. I think uh, it was like a weapon. Clean, well, he, he was holding mm-hmm. something out as he was getting ready to open up I didn't, the... Uh, I didn't pay attention to this much. Uh, this as much as I wanted to simply because I was working from home today. Uh-huh. Um, so it was kind of on in the background and I was taking notes on it while I was doing other things. Of course. So... But he opens it up and there is a lot of packing material inside of the coffin. Mm-hmm. Well, before he opens it up though, he's like, oh great, dad sent me another creature. And yeah. he goes so, through. So, so it's a known problem. This mm, it's thing a known. Happens. And every time his dad finds something that he thinks his son will love, it turns out to be horrible. He sent him. I forget what they're called, but they're in Japan. They've got these little dolls that are just a face, uh-huh. and the two eyes are blank. And you paint one in when you come up with a goal, and you paint in the other eye when you've accomplished that goal. Oh, neat. Um, and his dad sent him one of those, and it was cursed. <laughs> um, and then he sent him. Two other creatures, I forget what those were, but they were both absolutely horrible, horrible things. Right. And so he thinks his mental image of this super cute mummy is, you know, a cute girl with, like, blonde um, pigtails coming out. 
uh, wrapped up in mummy bandages. And then his next thought is, she's putting him in a chokehold, because that's just she, what happens. She, she's adorable, and she's going to kill me. Mm-hmm. I wish I could remember what those two other creatures were. Anyways, yeah, he and I like that because in the opening credits, um, we already see that there's going to be other creatures yeah. that join this cast. Um, one's a dragon, one's kind of a bluish bull thing. Um, and yeah, the it looked one, like a minotaur and then a, a red demon or something. Yeah, it was it was a red oni, a Japanese oni, yeah. which is just a demon. Yeah. Um, but he, um, yeah, so... Um, Finally, he opens up the coffin, and there is this tiny little handheld mummy who is seriously the, the, the size cu- of a child's plushie. Seriously, the cutest little thing. He's adorable. He, he's like a mini Baymax. Mm-hmm. He, he is as huggable as, a, is as a, a mini Baymax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a really good way to describe him, actually. He's like a miniaturized version of Baymax. Um, and he sees this mummy... The mummy comes out of the coffin, and the the size proportion joke is just great because it's this massive, massive coffin that's twice his size, and then he gets a mummy that's no bigger than his hand. Yeah. Um, it, it, by the way, that makes a great Christmas prank. I'm sure you've seen videos of it, but what you do is you get yourself a whole bunch of boxes of differing sizes, and what you do is you put... A plushie inside the smallest box, wrap that inside a bigger box, inside a bigger box, inside a bigger box, and just make this... Don't you dare tell them that's a good prank. That's a horrible prank. It's great to do to others. It's horrible when it happens to you. One year, our kid's sister... She, the present she got me was actually great. It was um, it was a game for the DS. I don't uh-huh. remember which what, what, what it was. Um, but she gave me a game for the DS... And the reason she did this is because I did a gift. Like I, I gave her a present that was actually a, um, a scavenger hunt, and uh-huh. she had to go through various places in the house before I gave her I her present. That yeah, day. and then she got back at me by giving me this massive box and filled it with cedar blocks or cinder blocks. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know about this part. Yeah, and I opened it up. And on, on top of all those boxes was the actual present. It was this really, really small thing. Mm. But it was a huge box. And I'm just like, what on earth did she get me? And she <laughs> she wanted to get me back for that. So okay. if she's listening, I still remember. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. And so he scoops up this mummy, puts him back in the coffin, and closes the coffin and says, well, back to Egypt with you. Yeah. And then you just see this pool of water forming underneath the coffin yeah and you're just like what on earth he opens it back up again and the mummy's crying it's the most adorably sad thing you've ever seen it's, it's so bad so sad and he's just like oh that sucks and but he cleans up after the mummy but as soon as he's done cleaning up he's just like he, the mummy keeps coming over and trying to like hug him or something. He, he needs comfort. He needs comfort. And he's just blocking the... He puts down a notebook and keeps blocking the mummy wherever it goes. Because he has no idea how dangerous this creature is actually going to be. Because mm-hmm. every time he's let one of his dad's little creatures uh, close to him, it's ended up bad for him. It's ended up real bad for him. Um, and so this little mummy then runs away and hides for a little bit. And... Um, it looks out, it comes, and then it comes back, and then it knocks on the <laughs> notebook to ask to be let in. And he's just like, uh... And finally, after a little bit, he, he rescinds, and he finally... And, and, and it's during this scene, and I wrote this down, it's during this scene that, that we're watching, that my daughter just shouts at the TV, Just hug him already! <laughs> I'm not surprised that Jasmine said that. Just no. hug him already. She just, she just couldn't handle it. <laughs> He's the cutest little thing. Um, and eventually he rescinds and stuff, and he he's he. Um... Well, well, what happens is he gets involved with the dog, mm-hmm. and so he has a dog, and the dog is three times the size of the mummy, and the dog's just a simple, uh, you know, household. By the name uh, of Pochi. By the name of Pochi. So you mm-hmm. know, maybe about 15, 20 pound dog, very small. Uh, mm-hmm. overall yeah and um and so and he's giving pochi all this love and he's feeding him and he's taking care of him and he's picking him up and and he's uh petting him and it's just absolutely adorable mm-hmm. and the mummy 
starts climbing up his back and barking because maybe that's what he needs to do to get love. <laughs> the mummy starts barking. Mm-hmm. Right before that, though, he was about to give the mummy a name when the dog showed up. Right. Mm-hmm. So he'd already decided to go ahead and keep the little thing for a yeah. little while anyways. Um, but yeah, and so um, Mikun, which is what we learned that he names the mummy, yeah. he, he calls up, he crawls up his back and starts barking and stuff, and it's his adorable little, bark, 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 you know, yes. teeny tiny little thing. And he he names him, um, and then there's this text that just appears above the head of the mummy that just says, he named me, that means I get to stay. Or, or, or he, you know, he's not sending me away, something like that. Little flowers appear mm-hmm. around him. And so, and every once in a while we get, um, we get Mikun vision, where, yes. um, what was, I, uh, it wasn't Monthly Girls Nozoki-kun, where every once in a while you get the girl's vision and it's prettier than it's supposed, than it's supposed to be. No, it might have been that. It may have been that, I don't remember. There, there's definitely, there's mm-hmm. definitely shows like that where that happens. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think of some. I think I know that there's. I know that that happens sometimes. It's usually romantic in, comedies. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah. Um, Monthly Girls in Zaku Kun. I think did mm-hmm. that. I think uh, it happened once or twice in um, uh, Oran High School Host Club, mm. but not. But wasn't ever her point of view. It was mm-hmm. like always the guy's point of view, or mm-hmm. or the point of view of other girls they were hosting. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, it was a thing. Yeah, so, um, so, so, so you get you get the flowery frame. You get like you get a you get a frame, and then the characters are drawn slightly differently. Yes. Like um, Soda Kun and, is drawn very very handsomely, and another and, and, character is drawn very evilly and the later. Ed- the edges are just slightly blurred, as if they put Vaseline on the screen, mm-hmm, which is what mm-hmm. they exactly what they did in the old sixties TV yep, shows, Star Trek and stuff like that. Yep, um, soften up. Them. So yeah, and so he he rescinds and he he gives the mummy a home, and then he he starts cooking the mummy food and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, learns that the mummy pretty much is okay with eating almost anything. Uh, even dog food. Even dog. Well, he likes dog food. So, mm. uh, well, I mean, honestly, what little boy didn't like dog food at one point? Mm. <laughs> Where li- little boys are weird. Watch your little boys. Uh, anyways, um... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I just told them to listen to you, and you just told me to shut up. <laughs> I said, to him you listen. Yeah, to him you listen means you're listening to this guy. Really? That doesn't mean listen to you. That's not what <laughs> it means at all. Yes, it is. To him you listen. Yes. No. Yes. No, if you're Yoda, maybe, but you're not. <laughs> anyways, anyways, um, we have next, um. Yeah, um... Okay, and then we get introduced to, to one of... Uh, yeah, we get introduced to one of his friends. friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sora... Sora, uh, the, his character design, he has uh, spiky orange hair, and his best friend has spiky blue hair. It's well, not really it, spiky, it, it's, it covers his face. Yeah, it's, it comes it, down. Okay, mm-hmm. so so yeah, his so Sora's is spiky and goes up, and the other guys, it comes down in into points. Mm-hmm. So. And th- this guy's name is... Uh, Tazuki Kamiya. Um. Yeah, they just call him Tazuki, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyways, um, he this around the, it's around this point when uh, Tazuki uh it gets introduced to Mikun. Right. Um. He comes over. Um. And Asada has no reason to hide Mikun from him, mostly because uh Tazuki is familiar with all the crap that his dad sends him. Right. They've been friends for a while. It, it, that implies they've been friends for a while. Yeah. Um, but um, he gets the mummy, and he's incredibly adorable, but rather than the, the typical normal, oh, he's so cute reaction that people get, what's Tazuki's reaction? Tazuki just looks at this thing and thinks to himself, he is so cute. I just want to mess with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And uh yeah, he he starts giving off this uh threatening vibe that mm-hmm. um and Mikun is instantly distrusting of him because of this vibe and yeah. stays away from him for a couple of episodes. Yeah. Um but um 
kind of just moving on. I mean, like, I've kind of forgotten where the episodes begin or end because everything is kind of like... It, it's one of those shows where each episode is um, individual adventures. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like half an episode is one adventure, half the episode is another adventure type yeah. thing. Miniature arcs. Um, yeah, it serializes into half episodes. Into half episodes, yeah. Um, anyways, um, Mikun wants to help with the cooking. Yes, he does. But he's too small to handle the utensils. He goes over and he tries to pick up a knife, but he's the size of the handle, so he can't pick it up. Yes. And so Sora gives him a specialized knife. He, he breaks off a piece of an exacto blade and he yeah, puts yeah, it around they, some they, chopsticks they, and tapes it all together and stuff. Yeah. And then Mikun starts dancing around. He's just so happy that he he's, gets the help. He starts running around with this block. So this block is actually really, really small, but compared to him, it's still, you know, about the size of both his arms. Mm-hmm. But it's made from bamboo chopsticks it's, and yeah. an exacto knife and some tape so it's as light as it's gonna get it is as light <laughs> so, as it's gonna get and he's more than strong to pick it up yeah. oh um before that we should probably talk about how um he uh so for, if the mummy doesn't get water every day he dries up and becomes like a real mummy yes so uh Mikun like uh sort of comes home one day after school and yeah, Mikun th- is just shriveled up on the table yeah, that was that was the day they was he was came to uh, bring his friend home to meet him. Yes, mm-hmm. and so he runs home and uh, and he, he or like uh, he runs to Mikun and he st- starts giving him water and the, they realize that the perfect cup size for Mikun is uh, a lid from a uh, from a from a bottle. Uh huh. Um, it's a it's like from a green tea bottle is what they use, but you know just a typical lid uh bottle lid. Yeah. Um. And they also they he bathes with Mikun at one point, and he pulls up Mikun, and Mikun has bloated three times in size because he's just absorbed all <laughs> he the absorbs water. Absorbs all the water, and he inflates, and he starts floating at the top, and he's like, "What do I do? Do I ring you out? How, how do I take care of this?" Yep, yep. So, um, oh yeah, so so he does the little he does a little dance, um. And they, they make dinner and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and so there he is chopping cucumbers. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he's got his little exacto knife and he's dicing up the cucumbers and it's mm-hmm. wonderful. And he, he dices one a little too hard and the pea starts flying. And so he drops the knife and runs to go catch it and runs off the edge of the counter where he was chopping. Mm-hmm. And this is right. This is right after Sora just checks on him and says, "Oh, he's just fine. I can go ahead and go over to the fridge and grab something." Yes. So, so parents s- who are listening are <laughs> familiar with that situation. With, with the you turned your back for just a second, mm-hmm. and Sora turns back and he sees Mikun falling, and he immediately goes into this super slow mo dramatic dive. And catches him and rolls and lands face first into the wall. Sorry, this just reminds me real fast of, uh, of I was watching uh, Talks Machina this week, which is kind of the talk show where peop- the, the actors who are on uh, Critical Role, they uh-huh. just, just kind of discuss the episode and they answer questions that are tweeted uh, okay. by fans. Okay. And Travis Willingham, um, one of the, he plays Grog in the first one and now he's playing Fjord, um, uh, a half-orc warlock. Okay. Um, he... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's also the voice, uh, the English voice of uh, Colonel Mustang. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's a really good voice actor. Okay. Um, but he, um, he, uh, <laughs> he revealed that, uh, and his, his wife revealed that he was the kid who would stick a fork into an electrical socket. Socket. To see what would happen. <laughs> to see what would happen. And apparently, and he raised his hand, gave the, the number two. He's like, yeah, <laughs> he did it, it twice. twice. And oh uh, they asked, and he just said, yeah, no, my mom punched me across the room. He's like, wait, what? What? Yeah, no, we bonded about it. Like, what? You can't, you, a kid's got his hand on a fork and electrical socket. You grab him, you're going to get shocked too. Yes. So she just kicked me across the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably misquoting. I'm probably misquoting it, but I had a real good. And sorry, just him diving down to grab him just reminded me of, uh, you know, Travis is getting punted across the room. He said he and his mom bonded over it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm probably getting part of it wrong. Don't quote me on it. Go watch it. Um, if you subscribe to them on Twitch, you can go ahead and watch the Talks Machina episodes okay. that they have. Anyways, um, so yeah, um. <laughs> The, 
uh, and it's around this time when we finally kind of meet Kaeda, who's his aunt. His aunt, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a very busy person. She's working all the time, it seems, and le basically leaves him to his own devices mm -hmm. and just helps to finance his... Uh, his living expenses. Mm -hmm. She, like, she had a deadline, usually have a deadline like that, and she's typing on the computer, so it looks like she has some kind of a writing job. I think so. Um, and then apparently she also has a modeling job. Yes. Um, and we actually see her in a commercial inside the show, so she also may be an actress of sorts. Right. Um, so she's got a lot of stuff going on, but she comes in after completing her deadline, yeah. and she sees this tiny little bento box Adorable. before so, and um real fast before we get into this we should probably explain that he decided to start bringing mikun to school because every time he comes home from school mikun is dehydrated right and so he needs to bring mm -hmm. him with him to school to keep take care of him and there's a little bit of an adventure that happens with a girl um who's she's in the opening credits yes uh, and she's, she's one the one the who hands, um named motegi is motegi. her name okay um and she sees this adorable little stuffed creature and, um, that's right. She sees She's... this adorable little stuffed creature and <laughs> it sneezes. <laughs> and, um, Sorokun says that, oh, no, 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 that was me. I was sneezing. And she didn't see Mikun sneeze. She just heard the sneeze. Uh -huh. But she's like, that's really weird. I've never seen a mummy doll that sneezes before. And he's just like, oh, no, no, that was me. That was me. And he starts coughing. Uh -huh. And, Tazuki sits right behind Sora and he just said and he just says to himself and I, this was just another laugh out loud moment mm -hmm. for me Tazuki was just like that's a cough it's not a sneeze <laughs> <laughs> so anyways little adventure happens where she um she wants the stuffed animal uh-huh um, and I forget why he decides to give it to her, but they make a, they like, they make a fake one. She ends up with the, grabbing the real one. They have kind of a little bit of adventure getting him back and yeah, stuff. Yeah, classic misadventure. Um, mm -hmm. we uh, also reveal that he's the fastest kid in school, apparently. Sora is apparently the fastest kid in school. Nice. Um, because the, uh, they're doing kind of a marathon in gym that day. Uh -huh. And he just bolts in front of all the kids because he knows the sooner he's going to get done, the math faster he can get um he can rescue me can rescue mikun and the gym the coach says something like hey sora great you got another new uh, another new best time and he says yeah i'm gonna go ahead and go on a break now and he just ru keeps running over to where the girls are because he thinks that mikun is in this little bag that she has anyways right um they get well, well long story story they get yeah go for it okay so what happens is she ends up leaving mikun in the changing room mm -hmm. and in the changing room um he start. He makes it down from the shelf that mm -hmm. he was left on, and sees a hole in the wall, mm -hmm. and, and then it goes into Mikun vision, mm -hmm. and he pictures going through the wall, finding Sora, and and everything's gonna be perfect, and everything's gonna be all right, and of course, just by showing that clip, you know that's not what's going to happen. Of course, first. of course, yeah, of course, and so he goes into there, and I called it, and I said, all right. And cue the rat. And Jasmine turns to me and says, Have you seen this before? I'm like, Nope. Nope. Didn't have to. Nope. We've just seen show, we've just seen situations like this enough to know when something's gonna happen. And, and sure enough, he, and then and then yep, he's mm -hmm. he's in between the walls and he runs into a rat. Mm -hmm. And you can which is simultaneously both an adorable drawing of a rat that's also incredibly evil. Yep. And, you know, you could easily just say, oh, that's cliche and roll your eyes at it and stuff like that. But when it's executed well, so what? And it was executed oh, yeah. well in this in this one. It really was. It, it, it works for this scene. Um, but anyways, long story short. we got to find a better place to put that. Yeah. Um, long story short. Um, Mikun and Sora get re reunited and he ends up giving um, Moe Moegi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Motegi, sorry, Motegi, um, he start, he gives her the, one of the fake mummies. Right. Um. And lies to her and says, I just happened to found, to find this in the hallway, so mm -hmm. here you go. And she's, and she's super upset thinking that, you know, she lost the mummy that he gave her and stuff like that. And then yeah. she's super happy. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, now we can go ahead and get back to Kaeda. Yes. Uh, because Kaeda comes out and sees this cute little bento box. Um, and it's like, oh, what a cute little bento box. And she looks in and it's literally what? Well, there's a handful of um, some foods, but it seems the main dish 
included bits of dog food. There were three things inside of it. A single slice of an apple. Uh-huh. Some so some noodles, uh-huh. uh, like a like a little bite of noodles, right? And then four or five pieces of dog food. Yes, so it looked incredibly scant. Uh huh. And so and she looks at this thing, and the only thing that comes into her mind is dog food. Why dog food? And she's like, he's <laughs> eating dog food. She immediately assumes that the bento box is his. Because, of course, why wouldn't, why wouldn't she? There's mm-hmm. only other one. She only knows that he's the only person. She hasn't met the mummy. She only knows it's him and the dog. And so she then proceeds, next time she meets him, to fall on her knees and beg forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I thought I had given you enough money to buy food. Why are you eating dog food? Is everything okay? He's like, please, if you need help financially, please just come to me. You need to be eating better than dog food. And, and he... Uh, f- after, you know, a little bit of that, he finally explains to her that, no, it's not for me. It's for this mummy. Yes. She's like, wait, a mummy? And so he's introduced to the, she's introduced to the mummy. And he's like, yeah, it came over in this coffin. And she's like, coffin? Coffin? There's a coffin? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, big brother, thank you so much for this wonderful present. He knows that I love coffins. And she's like, oh, so he sent this for you. Yep. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> and, and, and she just fawns over this thing in the mm-hmm. most bizarre. Just, it's, it's such a delight to watch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, she uh, she's an adorable character. Um, anyways. Um, okay, now now there's a scene involving her and the best friend and mm-hmm. her glasses. I'm not sure yes, where that falls be- in the timeline. but I forget exactly where that falls in the timeline as well. But uh, the best friend comes over. Um, I think it's near the end of the third episode when that I think, happens. I think you're right. Um, because we have the sickness. Yes, there's a, there's a mm-hmm. the, the second half of the third episode involves uh-huh. Sora getting incredibly sick with a fever mm-hmm. of thirty nine point one degrees Celsius, which for those who stuck on the Fahrenheit scale like myself is a hundred and two point three. Mm-hmm. So and that's something that's high. always just kind of um, I don't want to say irks me about anime, um, but I see it happen a lot in anime. How could you not know that your fever has suddenly skyrocketed that much? You feel it. You know when you have a fever a lot of the times. You do. Especially when it just rises up that quickly. So it just really shocked me that he was running off to school and then all of a sudden collapsed. Maybe it's an exaggeration Mm -hmm. of their culture that, you know, if you're, if, if, Mm -hmm. unless you're deathly ill, you really should push forward. That's very likely what it is. Um, but anyways, um, he, um, I think the dinner actually happens before the sickness and he gets sick after that because he was worried about making other people sick. Right. So, um, he, uh, Tazuki comes over for dinner one day mm-hmm. and, um, just, uh, before he comes over for dinner, um, the sister, Can no, it's got, it's got, you know, it doesn't really matter when, where it happens because this is the kind of show where the timeline doesn't really matter anyways. Right. Um, but I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's that is what happens. He gets sick first. Okay. Okay. He gets sick first because I remember now the reason she's cooking dinner for him is because it's like a get well. Yeah, because he's getting better. Mm-hmm. Right. So he got the cold, um, and um, he's sick for a couple of days. And Mo, actually, Motegi approaches uh, Tazuki at school asking if uh, he's if you know Sora is all right. Um, and uh, this is uh, um, something really really adorable happens. At night, and how about you go ahead and take okay. us take that away? Okay, so here's the setup. So, um, Kaede has been taking care of Sora, and has been wearing a gas mask <laughs> in, in moments that she's taking care of him. Well, Sora doesn't and... want people to get into come into his room because he's afraid of making other people sick. Right. And so she, because he is blocking the doorway, and she's getting more and more panicked about him blocking the door because he sent her, he called her to ask her to bring him something to drink and he said just leave it outside and she's like no 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 please let me in please let me in and then finally it stops and then he's like oh good it looks like she went away and then suddenly the window opens the window opens (laughs) and she's there with a gas mask on and on her shoulder is Mikun with a band-aid over his mouth for <laughs> that that's his filter. That's, that's his, his filter. He's got it's a band-aid over adorable. Uh-huh. And he's just kind of breathing through your ear. <sighs> <laughs> and he's thinking to himself. And me me, you know, 
monster movies. Uh, like I, I played Undead and Warhammer way back in the day. Yeah. Um, mummies don't need to breathe, but it's adorable, anyways. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's he's a very, very different mummy than we're used to in in modern culture. Yeah. But there's Sora at night. Um, uh, so that evening, Sora's lying in bed and has a wet rag on his head. Mm-hmm. Um, by his bed is his desk and there's a basin with water to, uh, refresh the, the rag with. Mm-hmm. And the, the rag dries off on his head and, uh, Mikun was, uh, spending the evening, spending the night on the pillow next to him. And Mikun decides he's going to help. He's going to, he, he remembers seeing the ant, uh, doing the thing with the water. And putting on his head and helping him feel better. And so he's going to help. And so he grabs the towel and he tries to go over to the desk and falls off the side of the bed. And and now he's looking at this insurmountable situation. The The desk is way too high up for him. It's it's stories of desk for uh, uh, to scale. And so he, um, he leaves the towel and starts climbing up the side of the desk. Mm-hmm. And reaches the basin. And now this is this scene takes place after the bath scene. So you know that if he falls into the water, he's just going to soak it up. Mm-hmm. So they've already established this point. So he falls into the water. He, and just, jumps, up, he just jumps, jumps right, right in. in. Just boop. And then he goes over and climbs onto Sora and lays himself down on Sora's forehead. And becomes the fever rag. Mm-hmm. And then he dries out. And repeats the process. And repeats the process all night long. It's adorable. Mm-hmm. And the next morning, uh, Sora is feeling much better, but he still stays home from school. Um, and uh, Mikun now has the sniffles. Um, and he's trying to take care of Mikun, um, but uh, Mikun wants to go outside. And this is the middle of winter, so it's still really cold outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and so going outside with the cold is not good for humans. But apparently it's not a problem for uh, the mummy. So well, how does the mummy take care of himself? The mummy goes down and starts trying to dig a hole, but he's very, very weak and is not able to do a very good job at it. Um, and Sora's just like, here, hold on, let me get, what are you doing? And the, he, the, the mummy's getting more and more desperate, really, really, and getting kind of depressed, really trying to dig this little hole. And then um, Pochi jumps out after Sora offers to go get a shovel. Uh, Pochi jumps out and just digs a hole. Yes. And then... Um, uh, Sora tells to Mikun, oh, look, Pochi just d- dug a hole for you. And then Mikun goes over and fills the hole back in and then dives into the dirt and buries himself. Yeah. Which freaks out Sora. Oh, what are you doing? Are you uh-huh. Doing? And, and, and when he tries to help and Mikun just brushes him off. And so Sora now has to sit and wait and watch and wonder what's happening. And, and so he's he, getting more and more depressed and more and more just trying to convince himself that everything's going to be okay. And while he's in kind of this days of trying to convince himself that everything's going to be okay, Mikun just pops out. And he's just fine. And he's just fine. So, so uh, now it's a, it's a known... And I was actually talking to Jasmine about this as we were mm-hmm. watching it. That it's a known thing for vampires. Mm-hmm. That the undead recover by burying themselves. Mm-hmm. Now that kind of makes me wonder if he's more of a vampire than a mummy. Which makes sense on two points. One, the Christian... The Christian coffin. Co- coffin. Mm-hmm. Which is, by the way, it's this glorious shade of dark purple with the with the uh, a gold, the gold cross, cross in the on center. It. So, yeah, it's it's beautiful. So it it looks like something straight out of Castlevania. Mm-hmm. And so it is not. It has no Egyptian iconography on it whatsoever, and it's mm-hmm. perfect. And it has the perfect hexagon ish shape of a coffin, mm-hmm. which again yeah. is not a, is not is is not a. Um, Italian, but the package uh, is very, uh, very misleading when it arrives because it literally looks like it's a sarcophagus. Like you take yeah, it, it looks like a looks... sarcophagus. It was wrapped like it's a sarcophagus, and you yeah. open it up, and it's not. It's nothing like a sarcophagus. Yeah, yeah. The package was was just weird. But yeah, um... and, and then he and then he buries himself mm-hmm. and then recovers, which both of those are a very vampire thing for this mm-hmm. mummy to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sora um, does. Anyways, um, after he's recovering and stuff like that. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, Kaeda um, is going to make sukiyaki for them. Right. Which is uh, like Japanese hot pot. Um, it's uh, soy sauce, sugar, and water broth. And I think there's a, you can add other things to it as well. That's okay. kind of just the basics of it. Right. You boil it up and then you cook meat and vegetables, uh, noodles, tofu, and things like that inside of it. It's really, really good when done well. Um, it's just kind of, you know, get, get together and meet. 
uh, an eat food type thing. Um, well, just as she's about, just as she's about to start prepping the food, she puts she goes to put on her glasses, and Sora immediately dives to try to stop her. But he's too late. He's too late, because as soon as she puts on her glasses, a completely different personality comes out, and she's just like the older sister, kind of um, lecturous older sister uh-huh. who's constantly flirting with everyone and everything. Yes, uh, personality. Um, and she starts flirting with uh, Sora, talking about how cute he is and what she'd like to do to him and stuff. And while this is happening, um, like she says the same thing to Pochi and the same thing to uh, Mikun and stuff like that. Um, and uh, he's like, sister, come on, take off the glasses, just take them off. Or aunt, take off the glasses. And um, uh, Tazuki comes in. And yes. Tazuki walks forward, and she immediately starts flirting with Tazuki, and like puts her arms over him. all around him and stuff like that. And in a single casual movement, Tazuki just goes boop and flips off the glasses, yep. and she reverts to her other personality. And she's, I did it again, <laughs> and she, um, and she reverts back to her kind of you know geeky, squeaky self. Yes. Um. And uh, she's super sorry, super apologetic about it and stuff like that. And they say, look, is there anything we can do about, you know, the fact that you have a different personality as soon as you put on, put on glasses? And she's like, no, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just how I am, you know? It's how I am and, it, and it's the job that I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she needs to do it for her modeling. And so it becomes this thing for her life. Mm-hmm. It's, it seemed to be that is what the conversation is. Yeah, she puts, she puts on her glasses for her other life. Uh-huh. Um, and it may be that she, it may be she has a different personality depending on the glasses she's wearing. Because I seem to remember, because she, she puts on kind of these red, thick frame glasses, very stylish looking glasses. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I recall correctly, I'll have to rewatch the scenes, but while she was in crunch mode, she may have been wearing a different set, a different pair. Right. Um, I'll have to rewatch those scenes, but I seem to remember her wearing glasses on those scenes. They they talked about her personality changing depending on the glasses she's wearing and that Mm -hmm. she's kind of a seductress when she's wearing red and Mm -hmm. she's maybe a bit more domineering Mm -hmm. with wearing black or some more serious, some, something Mm -hmm. about it. They will, they, it's clear that they're hinting at something that they'll delve into later. Mm -hmm. But she, but yeah, and Tazuki's just used to it. And so he joins them for dinner and stuff. And that's kind of where the episode ends with Tazuki going home. But before Tazuki goes home, um, he um, then starts... um, He he kind of makes friends with um, Mikun at this point, Mm -hmm. realizing that, you know, the stuff he's doing to Mikun is really, really hurting him and really scaring him. And one of my favorite parts of these three episodes that we watched is... um, Sora turning to, to Tazuki, and he's just like, no, I've, I've kind of been thinking. You know, he doesn't really have... There are no seams, you know? There's no beginning or ending to his bandages. It's all just there. So it's kind of like his skin. And he turns to him and just goes, how would you like it if someone, someone were to remove your skin to see what's inside? And he just gets kind of dark and menacing and stuff. <laughs> and Tazuki just goes... I, uh, I, w- I wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's so good. Mm-hmm. And so Sora puts the fear of God into into Tazuki, kind of being like, stop messing with him. And Tazuki stops. Tazuki and at the stops. end of that episode, oh, actually, we kind of see it earlier as well, like, um, as Tazuki was talking to uh, um, Motegi, mm-hmm. Motegi at school, we kind of see the shadow of the Oni watching, um, of, the, of the little baby Oni uh, watching um, um I just forgot his name, Tazuki, yeah. uh, watching him from the shadows. And at the end of the episode, we see um, the little Oni kind of standing underneath, underneath the streetlight that night. And that's where the episode ends. Yeah. So that's the first three episodes. Okay. Not bad. It's not bad. It's definitely a lot of fun. It's one of those things you can watch with kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. It's 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 super sweet. And I rank this character up with Tony Tony Chopper from... Um, from One Piece okay. as one of the most adorable things in anime I've ever seen. Tony Tony Chopper, he's the cruise doctor. He's the deer mm-hmm. person. Yes, yes. And when he hides from people, he hides the wrong way. Like, rather than, like, let's say, let, I'll hold my phone up here real fast. Rather than this being a wall uh-huh. and peeking around it like this, here's the wall and here's him. 
but he's barely hiding his eyes yeah. around the so wall. So he's like this when he should be like this. Yes. So, and he just does that over and over and over again. And he's also, whenever somebody pays him a compliment, he gets super embarrassed and super happy about it. But he always curses them out and says, don't you dare call me that, you horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So Tony is incredibly adorable. And I I, I totally rank Mikun up there. Okay. Uh, this is a show I definitely would be willing to watch more of um it's adorable it's sweet the characters are great mm -hmm. um and i'd like to see more of kind of the the monsters coming in and seeing what happens with that right so i don't know what, what are your final thoughts uh i agree uh it's definitely one of the shows that i would watch with my kids okay um and it's nice fi it's nice finding this mm -hmm. that uh that it has a heart and it has um and it's charming mm -hmm. And um, and it still keeps my interest. It plays it plays up on the tropes that it's not mm -hmm. too, it, it it doesn't subvert my expectations too much. You mm -hmm. kind of see things coming and and but there's there's some comfort in knowing that mm -hmm. you can see things coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's uh, it it's very much designed for younger audiences, but that's totally fine. I yeah. mean, it, it's it's working. It doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel heavy on the sap. You no. know, um, there's definitely some sappy things about it, but they work. You yeah. know, so uh, I, I I enjoy the show. I definitely would be willing to watch more of it. Okay. Okay. And with that, that's the end of our three episodes in. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be watching next week. And because we because it was my pick this week, it's your pick next week. What yep. did you, what have you uh, set aside for us next week? What we're going to be doing this next week? I uh, I um cried out in joy as I heard someone on YouTube talking about this show being added to Crunchyroll recently. Because I've been wanting to watch it. Really? It's called The Daily Lives of High School Boys. Uh -huh. And it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. Join, and this is the synopsis from Crunchyroll. Join Tarakuni, Hidenori, and Yoshitake as they undergo the trials and tribulations of life in high school. Each episode presents the boys and their classmates in unique situations that you may or may not have faced in your high school yourself. You'll mm -hmm. laugh, you'll cry, but hopefully laugh more. You'll be astounded by the zany antics of the Sonata High School community. So it's just a slice of life kind of individual episodic thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard great things about it. I'm very, very much looking forward to watching it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, looking forward to giving that a try. Yeah. So that's it for three episodes in. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the recommendation of the week. All right. And again, once again, this is uh, this is your turn. So what do you recommend for our viewers? I've already recommended this once, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend it again um, because it's on sale. And they've permanently cut the price. Really? If you have not picked it up yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend this game. Monster Hunter World. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is now $40. The game has sold, I think, last I saw it was like 8 million copies worldwide. It's the best-selling Monster Hunter game and probably, I think, the best-selling game Capcom has ever had. Um, so it's or it's $40. Mm -hmm. Loads of free content, content updates. Um... They're always adding new monsters to it, new things to do. Um, I haven't played in a couple of weeks just because I've been playing Dark Souls, but I'm planning on getting back into it now that I'm done with Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Monster Hunter World is just a complete blast. Um, you can solo the entire thing. You can go ahead and look for players to play with. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, it's all the multiplayer stuff is PvE, player versus environment, mm -hmm. as opposed to PvP. There's no PvP Uh that I'm aware of in Monster Hunter. I mean, there's rankings and stuff, sure. but you know, it's it's all PVE rankings and things like that. Okay. But it's a fantastic game. It's now only forty dollars. Um, I just learned this today, actually. Um, and um, I mean, I bought it for the full price when it first came out, but it's totally worth. It's worth the sixty to me, but it's totally worth the forty. So if you haven't gotten it. Uh, and you're kind of looking for a game, and I've sunk hundreds of hours into this one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you haven't tried it, try it. It's great. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that brings us to mm -hmm. our creator shout out. All right, and uh, this week it's my pick, and this week I am shouting out to the wonderful Ben Coombs. Is he really all that wonderful? He is. Okay. He is fantastic. Uh, ben Coombs is the artist who drew our caricatures for uh, for our website and for this podcast. And so, yes, um, he also uh, helped design the logo. Um, and so, he's uh, we really owe a lot to him. 
oh, that's, you can't really see it. Oh, well. But go to my Twitter. You'll see it. Go to WhitakerWeekly.com. You'll see my caricature. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, um, Ben is uh, on Instagram at uh, Ben.Coombs, C-O-O-M-B-S. And uh, seriously, go follow him. And uh, if you have any artwork for him, go uh, go send. Uh, if you have any requests, go uh, pay him a commission. He does. He, he does really good he's work. He's really good, you guys. Like I've seen his stuff; it's fantastic. Yeah, seriously, go take check out his stuff. And uh, if you need any artwork artwork done, remember artists deserve to be paid for their work. So don't ask for it for free. Do not do it. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, right. I mean that's all we can really say about it. I mean, go go check out his stuff, and if you want some artwork uh, to commission some artwork, go commission some artwork. Absolutely. Well, uh, that wraps it up for this week. Do you have anything else you wanted to mention? Yeah, I totally forgot about Octopath Traveler. That's one of the games I'm super excited about. It's actually coming out for the Switch in July, but it's a RPG with like kind of old school graphics but within a 3d way uh -huh. it's all pixel art but there's like different levels and stuff in the 3d art style i'll have to send a new video so you can see it okay. but it's called octopath traveler because there are eight characters mm -hmm. and you pick your party at the beginning of the game and they come together as a party but you kind of play their individual stories and stuff like Neat. that and nintendo is releasing a brand new demo for it they released another demo for it last year mm -hmm. um but they they're coming out with the second demo tomorrow the 14th so as of recording, it's the 14th. Right. And they announced that when uh, any save data you have from this new demo will carry over into the game. Neat. Mm-hmm. So the demo is going to be, sounds like it's going to be pretty close to the finished product. Fantastic. So, yeah. Anyways, sorry, I should have probably talked about the, that in the news <laughs> segment. But yeah. That's... The news segment was running long as it was. So yeah, it's it, fine. it really was. It's all fine. It really was. We try to keep the news short because we, we focus on we try to focus on the anime episodes here. But yeah, um, that's it. Uh, that's it for this week. Fantastic. Well, I've been Lee. I've been Andrew. And this is Whitaker Weekly. Have a good week. Take care.